when you can connect to your true self, why would you need prayer? You wouldn't. Or you could say that, that connecting with the sense of true self is prayer. Right? So if you just limit prayer to a supplication of me thinking of something other than myself, then you would say, well, no, you wouldn't need prayer anymore. But if instead you just take prayer and you go, okay, well, prayer is this desire to connect to, my, to the true self. And as long as there's a sense that the true self is something other than you, that you are trying to connect with, that there's something that needs to connect, there is a relationship there. Right? And, and that relationship made sacred and holy is prayer. And, and, the, and, and the elimination of that, of the, of the boundary, the elimination of two into the one, is the essence of prayer. Lord, replace me with you. Dissolve me out of existence. Right? That's the deepest prayer there is. And you can see it's not just, you know, it's not just words. That you don't even need the words with, with that heart's desire. Right? So any, even the idea of needing to connect right, it involves two. Even that idea must be set aside, it must be dropped. I cannot connect with what I am. I cannot connect with the ultimate self, because if I could, then I am something other than the ultimate self. Now there is another God. There is a second. This cannot be. There cannot be another awareness. So this awareness, right here, that which is aware of the, the computer and my words and the clothes you're, you're wearing must be that one. I must be that one. Now, take that in, there's nothing left to connect. And now you simply have to deal with all of the residual I thoughts and beliefs about others. Well, then what am I looking at? Well, I must be looking at myself. There cannot be anything other than that. And since everything is appearing within my consciousness, it doesn't have any existence other than my consciousness. But this my is not a person, which means the I that I have been calling a person, I've been calling Carl or GP or Barbara or uh, Melissa, is in fact the I. I don't exist. The I does. Lord, replace me with you. That this I, the very I that's sitting here asking me the questions, is the ultimate. There isn't anything other than you. You are what in religion is called God. I rarely say that because the word God is so loaded in our culture that for somebody to say I am God is the height of blasphemy. So don't use the word God, the self. Are you not the self? There's a thought that you are a self among many. But how could you have many selves? How could you have many gods? It would be, it would be hell. You'd have eternal conflict. There could be no heaven. There could be no harmony. There could be no rest. It would be the forever conflict. The idea that there is something other than the one self is, uh, is polytheism. That is the mistake. And if there can only be one self, and I am aware of only one self, and that is myself, then I must be that only self. That one so solitary self. Let me read you something from, uh, where are you? Right there. From the Ribu Gita. Having realized that the world picture on the screen self is evanescent and essentially non-existent, one should ever remain, remain still and blissful in the firm conviction of being 
the sole Brahman self only. I am that. That's where the name of the book came from. I am that. Does that help, Carl? You can say that that, that that desire to fully realize that is prayer. All desire is prayer. <laughs> it's not just the supplication. Every desire we have is a prayer, isn't it? And when that, and when those desires are purified to the point where the only thing we, the only thing we desire, is to disappear into that one, well, n now you're, now it's the ultimate prayer. You're standing on the holiest ground. Yeah. Uh, until you have dissolved into the one, you're you are no more. There is no more you. There is only the one. And you are that. Thank you.